Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, Thursday night showdown slate between uh, San Francisco and Seattle. Uh, 500k for first for the unique lineup, uh, and we're coming off of one of the most ridiculous showdown slates I've ever seen on Monday, when basically the top three projected guys all got all got ruled out. I mean, all got injured. Uh, really, like amazing situation where pretty much everybody in the top ten had a unique lineup. Uh, I'd like to think that it's a little more straightforward this week, but uh, there's already quite a bit of variance. So the bit of variance that has popped up is that uh, Debo Samuel is out. Um, so that does a couple of things. Number one is it it, it condenses the, the usage to the, the top guys. And it also has opened up, you know, the possibility for some other guys to come in and, you know, and either break the slate or at least have some impact on the slate with uh you know at, at low cost so so we'll talk about that so first of all as far as game environment goes so you have san francisco seattle it's a 43 and a half total which is probably right about reasonable right uh when i say reasonable it's not a particularly high total it's not a particularly low total for this time of year um i think that the field is going to probably play this um I think they're going to play it probably to the offensive side, maybe, you know, um, I don't think people realize how good uh, San Francisco's defense is. Uh, and it, well, it doesn't even matter uh, because you have Seattle and you have their, you know, where all their skill position guys are. I mean, it's hard, not difficult to find. Them. You know, you have, you have Metcalf and Lockett and Kenneth Walker Jr. Right. That's, that's the offense pretty much. I mean, there's other, there's other, guys in there but those those are the main guys and Geno Smith so so they're gonna people are gonna play the Seattle offense all right um San Francisco side of the ball um it sometimes can be challenging but 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 here you have the you know you have uh, what's his name uh Brock Purdy as quarterback and so you know that they're going to try to not just rely on him so they're, they're you you know that they're gonna what, what their plan is they're gonna, gonna try to get the ball in Christian McCaffrey's hands try to turn it over to the defense um and not turn this thing into a freaking shootout okay that's that's going to be that their their deal um, and with Debo out yeah I mean they're they're gonna have to replace him somewhere but I mean logically you have uh, Ayuk and 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 Kittle are going to you know, take up most of his Pass catching usage, and and that certainly makes a lot of sense. So I do feel as though the 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 ability to analyze this slate is really easy. In other words, we don't have to really just figure out where the main the main produ production is coming from. So in those types of slates, the um, the majority of the field is going to do that and play the offense. The problem is is that you know you can't you can't pay it for everybody like for example right, let's say that you were going to play McCaffrey right you played him in the captain then you're already at 65 80 a person and let's say the, even like, the only guy you want to play from San Francisco is McCaffrey and what are you going to do here you're going to play they made this very difficult I right? even if you play Smith with only one pass catcher underneath. You're now at 4,100 a person with very little value. That's really good. Um, you you could play something like Robbie Gold, and then maybe you probably want to play one of these defenses in a build like this for 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 not, not because of, of the game script, but because what else are you going to do? So this is when all of these kind of cheapo punts just have to come into play because I mean you want to play McCaffrey he's the highest projected player on the slate by seven points you put him in the captain that means the highest projected captain by 11 points or something like that so you want to play him the game script and and the game plan certainly looks to be very favorable to him which is why he projects that well but you know it's not as if anybody's cheap on Seattle and that's why you know it's it's a blessing and a curse. The blessing is you know where these targets are going. The bad news is everybody knows that, so they're going to project that well, and you can't play it. Um, now you can't play it, but you just can't play all of them. So uh, we have to be a little bit sensitive or a lot sensitive to price. But I've already put in, 
I mean, Metcalf is cheaper than Lockett. I mean, what else are you going to do here? I think that we really have to, unfortunately, just try to dive into these cheapos. So let's clear the fields. Let's talk about some of them. I guess in order of grossness, you want to talk about in order of grossness? All right, we'll talk about in order of grossness. At 1,200, you have Ray Ray McLeod. Now, again, what he has going for him is that Debo Samuel is out. That's pretty much it. Um, 28 snap, 44% snap share. Uh, but he had that after he was carted off the field. Um, okay. 1,200 is really cheap. That's that's the other good thing. Uh, the next guy I would throw in, and again, this is an order of grossness, so it's going to be all these are gross. But at 200, you could take a look at Danny Gray. Now, let's see what he has. And he's got one target. Okay. Uh, garbage time of week 14. Uh, who knows? I mean, he's a rookie. He's always got something. Might not even play at all. Now, the least ugly of all these, and who I think is going to gain incredible ownership as a result of the dynamic I just described, is going to be Juwan Jett. Okay, so he is actually going to be on the field. And he might actually take on that, whatever that means, starting role. Um, however, you know, he did have an atrocious performance. Um, however, having him start and being on the field is probably worth something. The, the only thing is, again, is what is this game script going to look like? I mean, Seattle is not going to want to do this. I mean, they're going to, I'm telling you, they're going to want to just put the ball in, in, in McCaffrey's hands and just kind of be done with it. Uh, if they can get away with it, great. Is, is their plan really going to be, be having Purdy just spray it all over the field, especially to Juwan Jennings? Um, I think you're going to have to gamble on that a little bit um, because you, you're just going to need value over here. Okay, so that, those are the the gross plays with respect to San Francisco. I don't think I'm going to get down to – what are some of these others? Like Jordan Mason or something? Backup running back? No thanks. Oh, you know what? What about what's his name? Mr. Showdown Slate. The juice is loose. Literally never play him until he's on a showdown slate. What's he been up to? Nothing. Just literally nothing. Yeah, it's not going to happen for me today. What other San Francisco guys are there? Not really. So now there, there's another thing that we haven't discussed yet. We'll, we'll get to that. But we're, we're doing all this presuming that we have to play McCaffrey and McCaffrey, right? Like, if instead you took a different San Francisco guy, or let's say we played, well, forget the San Francisco guys. Let's stick to the same game script. Let's put in, I don't know, uh, Metcalf in the captain. And then we put um, McCaffrey in the flex. Does that help us? I mean, a little bit. Can we then, can we play Gino? Now we're still at forty three hundred a person, so we're still into that. You're gonna have you're gonna have to play someone under four K. You're just gonna have to. Um, it could it could be the defense could be whatever kickers are even four K. You're gonna have to play someone three K or lower, I think. Um, which is why the Jennings play is just gonna be really popular um, and probably a good play. Well, let's take a look at some of the Seattle uh, bow wows then, uh, as far as plays go, because we're gonna have to find something, right? In order of grossness, I guess, and we'll get to their actual players, I guess. I mean, obviously, Kenneth Walker is a good play. Like I said, Walker, Metcalf, Lockett, Geno, all good plays. But let's take a look at the bad plays. So Jason Myers at 3,800. 
and that's going to be pretty obvious, I suppose. Um, but then you have Will Disley at 2,400. How bad of a play is that? He was open for a few minutes on one route last week. They threw it over his head, I think. That was, oh, that was the one that he missed. Otherwise, he would have been three for three. I mean, at 2,400, I guess, I guess he's something. Like I said, you have to, I think you're going to have to play someone cheap. Ooh, there's another cheapo for Seattle I didn't, for San Francisco I didn't bring up. Just for, just for fungies. How bad, of a, how bad of a play is Tyler Croft? I mean, would you, if I made a worse play than Tyler Croft? Probably. I made some bad plays. Oh, goodness. Don't know. I don't know. I just don't know if the secondary pass catchers is what you're supposed to do here. All right. Um, what else from Seattle? Well, no offense, a good play, but that's not really particularly cheap. He's 4,400. What about, ooh, what about Colby Parkinson? How bad of a play is this? Um, let's see what he's doing. Well, I mean, two targets, one target. Couple back, he had three targets and two targets. He has a total of, I think, eight fantasy points for the season. Is, it, is there a ceiling anywhere? Nope. They did get him a touchdown in the first game of the season. These just all look like zeros. I mean, but may, maybe, maybe you take the zero so you can get up to these. Maybe that, maybe that is the idea. Maybe you just. You, 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 okay, so this is what we do. How about we start with, let's say the guys we really want. Let's put McCaffrey up here. Boom. Let's put him in the cabinet. And I want everything. Who's the second highest projected guy? Because we're going to probably end up having to take Ray Ray McClay. Hold on. Highest projected guy would be, Gino would be next. And we probably want to put a pass catcher. So let's put in um, put in the cheapest one. We'll put in Metcalf. All right. I wonder. So now let's put in uh, kind of the the the. What if we did Jennings and um, fans? For, for, for argument's sake. I mean, this you can do. You know, there, there are guys you can play that we talked about. There, You can play Robbie Gold. He's under 4,300. As a matter of fact, this could be end up being a kind of a chalky build now that I think about it. Um, are people going to play use check? Probably not. You could save a little money and play where you, where you can leave money on the table and gamble on, on, on Colby Parkinson. Um, Tyler Croft, talk about that a little bit. Want to play him at 200? No, you probably want to play somebody. So Gould is 4K and Myers is 4K. So I actually think that what I'm putting up here was one of the kicks who's going to be probably pretty chalky. Um, and you'll also get some lineups that pay up for the extra 200 for Lockett and can do the same thing. Um and I think it's I think it's I think it's reasonable. I think it's reasonable in the 222. I think it's reasonable in cash to play this way. Um I do think that Jennings and Fant are are enough of a part of their the, the respective offenses to make uh to make this all work. And again, the other thing you can consider is not playing McCaffrey and the captain. You know, so what what does that look like? What 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 is what is a game that McCaffrey does not get in the captain look like? I just don't – are we really going to get Seattle put up a bunch of points? Where The problem is that McCaffrey is so freaking game script proof because even if San Francisco has to come from behind, I guess the only way to say that he'd be game script proof, or that he would be fall to a game script, is if they put up a bunch of points and Seattle can do nothing. Like, to wit. Okay? Like, if you played the San Francisco defense – in 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 the flex, 
And then you played um uh what's his name? Someone like Kittle in the captain. And then you got Purdy. Purdy, the, the Purdy two touchdown passes to Kittle variation, right? Purdy two touchdown passes to Kittle. And then we're, we're fading, we're fading, we're fading him completely. Can't fade him completely. We'll put him over here. And then we'll play maybe another receiver to get McCaffrey his his third touchdown, maybe. And that would be to I, I imagine Brandon Ayuk. Makes sense. And then you run it back with one cheapo from Seattle. Something like I don't know, like Will Disley or something, Cody Parkinson. So that that that's what the, the McCaffrey not in the captain lineups kind of look like. I do feel as though that hmm, this I think this is what a blowout sort of looks like. You know, McCaffrey did enough, but they don't leave him in the whole game. They, you know, they, they bring in who they bring in. It's a good question. We talked about I talked about this before, right? They bring in Tevin Coleman. Or is it use check? Jordan Mason is too expensive, but that's probably who they would bring in, right? 4,800, that's not nice. 11 for 56. I mean, you can certainly get a, you know, you can do this. You play McCaffrey. Oh my God, what if you did this? You played McCaffrey. You go for full on run. You go McCaffrey and Mason. You don't play Purdy. So here's what we do. We put this could get you different actually. We put McCaffrey in the captain. Then we put Mason in the flex. You get two rushing touchdowns. You get the 49ers defense. And then, I mean, you do need – so these guys have to get yards on the, on the run back, right? So you have Lockett on the run back. And then you could run, you know, any of these guys. You could run Kenneth Walker and then whatever you want. So the double running backs with the Mason and the McCaffrey, I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I, I think that they can get Mason a touchdown here. Um, I think. But that would be really a 5-1 situation. That would be like if they were really just like jamming, you know, running out the game. Um, okay, so that's what I want to do. Let's let's do a uh, let's do a Saberson build and see what we would come up with. We just again, if we just ran the projections that we had now and gave Saberson a license to do to really just go for the throw with respect to correlation, all that stuff. So this is what we'll do. Uh, we'll do two different builds. The first one, we're going to put no salary restrictions. The second one, we're going to leave a minimum amount on the table. Okay, so 150. 150, well, we'll do it. Okay. And we'll do it at the 150. We'll do no salary restraints and see what, uh, what we can come up with here. I imagine they're just going to jam McCaffrey in with Je with Jennings. All right, I think I bet you Jennings ends up like a million percent on. That's what I'm guessing. Let's see what happens. What we get is, wow, what do I know? Oh, it's the captain. He's only he's he's two percent the captain. Wow, McCaffrey's only twenty five percent captain. Oh, and Jenny. Oh, look at look at look at Ray Ray. Thirty six percent. Let's go. Oh my God, God help me all. Oh, this is this is what I like though. Let's go, Ray Ray. One time. Oh God, zero. He's gonna have the. He's gonna have the the senator, not the senator, the Mister Blutarski line score. 
which is for those of you that are not from my generation, 0. 0. 0.0. But hey, what if he doesn't? What if they run the Debo play for him where he takes the takes the end around and takes it all the way down for the end into the end zone at six percent ownership? We shall see. Um, all right, that'll do it. Uh we're gonna I'm gonna be going live at 745. Um, excuse me, 645, where we go over a little bit of NHL, but then NBA and the NFL. And so we will go through this again. All right. Uh, good luck, everybody.